Director of Pacific Media Centre David Roby alongside Little Island Press are releasing the fifth edition of the Eyes of Fire book, commemorating the 30th anniversary of the sinking of the Rainbow Warrior. Roby, who was a journalist on board the ship in 1985, says this edition will put things into context. You know, when I thought about it and I planned uh, what to do, and I thought, well, this is going to be quite an extraordinary thing. So I'd planned a book right from the start. If I was going to spend 10 weeks on, on board, I was doing journalism um, for media all around the region, but my end goal was actually to do a book. And that led to the publishing of the first Eyes of Fire book in 1986. Publishing director Tony Murrow says it's all about connecting communities. I think what we've seen with the 30 years that have passed since the Rainbow Warrior bombing are uh, that uh, there's a whole generation that doesn't really know about this part of the Pacific, this, this episode in Pacific history. For us, it's, um, it's not just about a book, it's about an entire movement of people and, and um, leveraging the, the connections with us, those people from the past, the, the uh, uh, original members of the Rainbow Warrior um, vessel, allowing them to, to pass on that knowledge to the new generation and hand over to them. Alongside the book, the creation of a microsite gave a way to bridge the digital and print worlds. At a time when we've got uh, climate change and other environmental issues, pollution in the Pacific, it's quite critical to, to see that this is an ongoing, part of an ongoing uh, period of activism that needs to continue and needs to be handed over to this new generation. Roby says the nuclear-free mission is also a humanitarian issue. But in this case, this, this was all about um, you know, the absolutely horrendous uh, nuclear testing that had gone on with Americans uh, from, since the 50s, and the callous disregard for the health of the, uh, the people and their well-being. And with the project that AUT students have embarked on, Roby says the issues from 30 years ago are still relevant today. The critical issue, I think, facing the whole Pacific region is climate change. In fact, it's facing the whole world. And unfortunately, media don't uh, see that as, 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 as a critical issue. It's not just a, a topic to be covered. This is, this is our future. It's absolute uh, critical decisions and policy making. It's right, so important about this for the future. And it's really important to get as much media coverage about that. And these are sort of things that are often neglected by the media because you know, um, media organisations can't afford to send someone off, usually for you know, 10, 10 weeks on assignment like that. French journalist Amélie David says she wants to find out more about what the event means to the average New Zealander. Since I'm here, everybody, in, like, every, every time I'm saying I'm French and at a certain point in the conversation comes to, oh yeah, and you're seeing the rainbow wire, you know, and that's why I'm interested in, in getting to know what really happened, what really was the rainbow wire, what the Greenpeace people wanted to protest against what we were doing in the Pacific Ocean, because um, it's so far away actually from our country that we don't even really know what happened there. Emily says the event is known to the older generations of French who live in Auckland, but back home, it's a different story. Back in the country, though, I would not say it's a big topic and it's a big issue. Like, I've been trying to, you know, talk to French newspapers about that, and I didn't get that much answer at the moment. I don't even know if there is something going on and they are, if they're planning on doing some kind of big thing. So we don't quite often talk about this. And um, for us, young people born after that, we don't talk uh, about it uh, in school as we should do, I personally think. She says French communities may be ashamed to address the incident. Well, uh, the bad thing we, we did, uh, it always come up at a certain point, but not right away. Like, uh, for example, lately our president apologized for what we've been doing in Algeria, for example, which was the French war. And so probably at some point we would like come up with some apology uh, for New Zealand and people will get to know about really what happened. Emily says she is most looking forward to finding out the current relations between the two countries. 30 years later, what's up? Like, what's going on between New Zealand and France about politics, economics? And I would um, would like to discover what uh, France is doing now in the Pacific Island. Is it really over or is there still things going on?